Welcome to the Profit Talks podcast, hosted by the Orange County Inland Empire SBDC Network, funded in part by the U.S. Small Business Administration and the California Office of the Small Business Advocate. This show is the go-to resource for business owners seeking empowerment, education, and resources to succeed. Join us as we connect you with experts, share the triumphs of fellow entrepreneurs, and reveal the wealth of assistance available to you today to level up your business. So let's go. Let's dive in and learn more. Well, I'm excited about today because it's a topic very near and dear to my heart. We're going to be talking to to um, an expert on marketing at the SBDC. I've been in one way or another in marketing most or if not all of my life uh, telling stories. And uh, too often marketing is just about numbers and measurement and throwing it out and data and everything else. And somewhere in there we lose the idea. It's about connecting you to a customer. It's about them believing you and trusting you and liking you and calling you. It's not about just throwing stuff out and uh, seeing what sticks against the wall here. So today, I think I have a fellow uh, traveler here, a fellow uh, a person who sees marketing as more than just uh, messages. It's about connections. Welcome, if you will. Edgar Mahia, did I say that close to correct? Close to correct. All right. <laughs> Edgar, you work uh, on the world of what I don't know, it's had different names through the years. We used to call it online marketing, and then it became digital marketing, and then it became social marketing. All of these things, they're trying to find the right phrase to give it to, to bring it to life here. You have a different phrase for it. What do you call what you do? Connection marketing. Connection marketing. And in fact, yes. you had a company, for, you were telling me for what, 10 or 15 years, that was called yeah. just that. Con connection absolutely yes why have we lost the idea that we have to connect with the customer I, I don't need I don't need you to uh, talk to me there's no back and forth here I just need to get in front of you and hammer you and and um, uh, entice you and uh, list all the things I do real quickly and give you some half off offer I just got to get in front of you and you will respond without any connection whatsoever. Why do we think that works? I don't think it does. Because it does generate, <laughs> at the very least, tempor temporary results, right? Temporary, um, right. And a, a good example that I can share with you is the Groupon model, right? Right, they're perfect. Groupon was ex excellent at getting you in the door. Right. But a lot of businesses over time learned that unless that promotion is uh, bringing you in my, in my shop, you're not coming back. Exactly. I'll because give you a different so uh, example. Years and years ago, I'm an Irishman. I thought it'd be fun to have an Irish pub. A bunch of us built one of these things. What a crazy business. What a nightmare. And so it's like throwing a party every day at your house here. Uh, people come in and they trash it and they party and wacky things. But we, it worked for a long time. We had it for like 10 years in Mission Viejo called Kelly McHugh's. And yes. what we learned... I thought I'm a big marketing guru. I did uh, PR, I've done marketing, I did all these things this back in the 90s. So this is before the internet and all this new stuff you're talking about here. And I thought, boy, we're just gonna list all the things we've got. We got, we're kind of a sports bar. We got 20 TVs, we got 40 beers on draft. We've got this, we've got that. And I list all these things and nobody cared. They didn't come to our sports bar, our billiard club or whatever you wanna call it, Irish pub. Uh, because we had three more TVs than the other guy did, or four more beers on draft. It wasn't, it, it wasn't a features and benefit kind of comparison. If they want to know, right. was it fun and did they like it? How do you say it's fun? You can't just say, come, it's fun. Uh, and so we really had frustration and we would run coupons. That was the obvious way we'd send out half off, you know, free two for ones. And, and the coupons would come back, but the customers wouldn't. They were coupon clippers. They just went to wherever the free stuff was. And, the, and our thought was, once you come in and try it, we'll entice you. Surely you'll come back. Those people never came back. Uh, so you make me think of something really, really um, interesting and fascinating that for years I, I, I couldn't quite um, put, put, it, put the two dots to connect the dots. Right. But, um, but did you know uh, Guinness World Book of Records? I'm sure you've, you've heard of it. Absolutely. Them. Oh, I was nut for it as a kid. I'd read every mm -hmm. one of them. It's still iconic, right? People are still competing worldwide to get in this book. 
Right. But did you know that it was created by Guinness beer? I did actually, and I've forgotten why. Because I'm only because I'm an Irishman, and I know the, the term <laughs> Guinness. I forgot why Guinness beer created this thing here. To get people to sit and connect, to get people to sit and consume more beer. See, and while you're sitting there and sharing these statistics and insights, guess what it does? You bond. That's right. And that goes back to the idea. I, I, I said we our goal was to make an Irish pub. It really was more like a sports bar. And the success of it ultimately was the bonding of the customers and the customers and the staff. Because in a true Irish pub, as I really researched, and I've only been to Ireland once, the pub is the center of conversations in the community. That's it's right. where everybody gathers to hang out, to catch up, to connect, to meet people, to date, to, to laugh, to, to uh, see what your neighbors are up to here. They didn't have phones. They didn't have the internet. It was the gathering place where the world came together periodically to connect. And exactly. uh, you know the old idea of Cheers, the TV show, where everyone knows your name and is glad you came. Boy, that was a hard thing to do. In today's world, I can't think of many bars or restaurants, maybe little tiny ones, but the big chains are just about, you come in and it's, it's an experience, it's Disneyland, you go in, but you, you, I don't know that you connect, I don't know that they know your name, I don't know that you feel connected to the place, one's the same as another here. And so there isn't any, there isn't any, another word that's been lost in the eons of time, brand loyalty. When I was a kid, my dad only drove Chryslers or, or bought, I don't know, mobile gas or whatever he bought. You know, you, you came up with the, I only ate Heinz ketchup. I don't know why. That was the one you had to have. We created a connection, a feeling, a connect. That's my brand. That's my thing. Now I go and buy any no-name ketchup that's on the thing here. And yeah. it's, it's all, there's no connection right. to the brand. Uh, in, in, in fact, um, in shopping existing brands, you know, people are willing to spend more for a brand that means something to them, right? Absolutely. But I, but I think you touched on Coca-Cola in the '80s, experimented with the new, the new jet, new cola, right? New Coke. New Coke, and it backfired. It it people. It lasted 72 days, but they were dramatic for the Coke XX, and I'm sure people lost their jobs. But if you merely on the basis of statistics and insight and data, this new Coke was going to be a huge hit for the company. Because new is always a, a good way to sell something. New and improved. The restaurant's under new ownership. The product is new and improved. We've added new ingredients. We've added new features. It's in a new bottle. It's in a new thing. New always catches your eye. And so the thing, I, I don't know, the, I remember that story. I don't know the, the history of it other than it failed miserably and people continue to quote it. New is not, it, it, it isn't a trick. Why do we think that attracting a customer is a trick? Look, new shiny bottle. Look, new hours. Look, new special, new feature, new offering. As, as opposed to somehow getting to know me and understand what I'm offering or what I do or what we have, I, I guess that just takes time and we don't want time. I, I always say we want to go back to the days of the Yellow Pages. I certainly do. I just bought the biggest ad I could afford <laughs> and whoever had the biggest ad got the most calls. I did it once. I didn't have to think about it. Throughout the year, I got phone calls. And, and then next year, I'd up the ad a little bit here, and I'd try and put in as many things as I could because I don't know what they're looking for. So I'd cram the ad full of lots of things that we had and offered here. And uh, free parking, a discount, uh, you know, neighborhood, USA, uh, veteran-owned, all these things I could throw in whatever I did. I don't know. That doesn't work. That doesn't entice me. And maybe it, it, it works in getting people in the door, I think, right? Yeah. I, I and guess. again, the, the, much like the group one, right? But right. once people, once you get people in the door, can you then convert them into a connection? Right. Can you then go beyond that? And if one of my favorite tactics, by the way, of getting people in the door mm -hmm. was executed by Bumble, right? This is the dating app for women. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> where women get to call the shots. Right. Uh, but, and I love this, this story. Uh, there were a brand new company uh, in fact, had not launched anything. But here's how they launched: okay. they put up they put up signs at colleges, in colleges, 
and poster boards and it would say, did you know that Facebook, Google, YouTube, and Bumble might be jeopardizing your data? Well, those other three were well-established brands, but Bumble, people thought, who, who the heck is <laughs> that? Was Bumble, yeah, all right. Yeah, but pretty brilliant, right? Right. So put you on the radar. So people saw the these posters and then uh, strategically, uh, they, these Bumble guerrilla marketers would wait for classes to start and someone would open the door, enter up the classroom wearing a yellow Bumble t-shirt <laughs> and say, oops, sorry, I'm in the wrong class, but it says Bumble across their shirt. Yeah, and right. people would look up and say, what was that? Right? Exactly. They were disrupting. But the once people jumped on the app, right? They created these connections and it was very, a very intimate experience. Right. And I think that's the other thing that's missing in this connection, right? Vulnerability and intimacy. Oh, vulnerability. You know, uh, we've had, I do this thing, OC Talk Radio, and so we've interviewed people here in Orange County, mostly business conversation, but we have had the opportunity to interview a number of YouTube influencers, this new job category that my 10 year old grandson dreams of. He doesn't want to be a fireman anymore. He wants, doesn't want to be an astronaut. He wants to be a YouTube influencer. And this new job is so cool because you just go on and a million people follow you and you're famous and then Coca-Cola funds you and you're a millionaire. But I've asked a number of them, so what's the secret? How are you doing this thing? And yes, it's daily and it's repetitive and you got to be clever and you got to come up with a gimmick. Uh, Mr. Beast gives away millions of dollars and all these things. Here. Whatever it is, all that's what you're talking about, the clever and to get there. But the connection is often they're vulnerable. I'm scared. I don't know what to do. I'm frightened. It's it's what we hope to get out of reality TV. We think it's real. We feel really connected to these people. They're talking right into the camera. I'll get really up close into my camera here. They're talking to me, to you. And there is a feeling of connection when you do that, when you share and get vulnerable, which I grew up thinking that's the worst thing you do, particularly as a man, particularly in a business. No problems here. We got everything handled. Everything's good here. Come work for us. Come buy from us. Yes. But if you do get vulnerable and share and talk like a real person, people really get interested. So that is one trick that I suppose works. But there's something, we want it to be more than a trick, don't we? We want to really create, when we worked at our bar, it took years to get a real connection with the customers. And when we did, it was like gold. We could have run that bar forever. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it, these are long, it, it becomes kind of a long lasting connection with your customers here. And that's something that nobody either has the time for or the talent for or talks about. It's all about immediate results, get them in the door, get the next customer. I always argue that today, like the bank, you go to the bank and it's all about get you in new, new, new. Hey, Mr. Roberts, did you get this? We got a new product, we got a new service, everything else. They don't do a lot to retain my business. Some of the better banks do. They might know me, might recognize me, might say something here, uh, might do something for me once in a while. But the more I just feel sold to, the less like, or, or my other great example, I'm sorry I'm doing all the talking here, but my other example would be you go to a networking thing. Talk about that. You go to a networking thing and all you see the guy who's just passing out cars and he's looking over your face like, yeah, here's my card. Here's what I do. And he's already looking who else he can talk to. He's just yeah. there to spread as many seeds as he can and hope one of them sprouts. Right, 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 right. Uh, interesting example. Um, so uh, in a previous life, right. uh, when I ran this consulting agency, I actually work with Chambers of Commerce almost mm. exclusively. Okay, wow. All right. and, Interesting. Uh, from Los Angeles all the way to DC, in fact, was hosting an annual event at the US Chamber of Commerce that was just absolutely spectacular. Okay. Uh, they have a lot of clout, so they had a, the ability to attract very influential speakers. Right. Uh, Colin Powell, Shark Tank, uh, O'Neill, the Navy SEAL, who I love the work neutralize for some <laughs> yeah that. just eh, he just yeah. neutralized him that's a yeah. that's a polite way to say it yeah and um <laughs> but a lot uh, all chambers really thrive and exist on the basis of events right right and the assumption by many of these organizations is that people know how to network right that network <laughs> consists of here's my card what do you do here's what i and, and before you're done telling people what it is you do they want to tell you what it is they do yeah, exactly and, and somehow that's connecting or networking, right? right? 
more deliberate networking, and it's something that we used to do with our clients. We would host an event mm -hmm. and we'd say, uh, the networking event starts at six, but between five and six, we're going to do networking exercises. Oh, wow. And so people would show up early, wow. show up early thinking, what do I do, right? Yeah. But here's the, here's the magic of this, because okay. I love the word vulnerable. We would get, say for instance, a hundred folks, mm -hmm. We break them up into ten, groups of 10, and we would give someone the role of leader in that group. Mm -hmm. Three questions. You're going to go around the circle, ask three questions. What's your name? What company are you with? Simple. Just right. to get them to open their mouth and get over the fear. Right. The second question is, what is, for example, what is one thing that you saw as a vulnerability when you were younger that you know to be a superpower today. Wow, something you were scared of. This is, I don't wanna be vulnerable. I don't wanna admit that I'm scared or uncertain or or shy or whatever here, but now I'm gonna see it as that's my power. Imposter syndrome was huge. Imposter syndrome, yeah, right. I was fat and kids made fun of me. Right. Short and kids made fun of me. Right. But all of those things today are my signature this is how people remember me. <laughs> I'm the short, fat, bald guy here. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. And, 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 and so what happens is we just force people to look at something. And by the way, a lot of them didn't know the answer. Yeah. But you just put them on the spot, right? So right. now they're thinking, shoot. Yeah. And you know what? That is my superpower. That mm -hmm. is why people remember. That is. And suddenly they just took off that skin, right? That yeah. shell. Right. And we go through these questions and then we, from the main stage, so what, anything that stands out, please leader, share it. And they would grab the mic and say, you know, so-and-so in this group just said that, <laughs> and they would, and suddenly other people in other yeah. circles would say, oh my God, it's such an awesome story. Yeah. And they, and I always say the power of stories is threefold. This is my take. I've been, I've been Irishman, so I grew up, everybody tells stories. Uh, uh, when I went to Ireland, I'd uh, stop. The one time I went, I was in Dublin. I'm looking for the big street, O'Connell Street. And I stopped somebody, said, excuse me, I'm an American. Where's O'Connell Street? Oh, O'Connell Street, where my mother met me father. What a rat he was. If only she'd stayed away from that dirty street and everything. I'm like, is it left or is it right? I just want to know. There's no story to this, right? Everything was a story. So I grew up in that kind of culture. And I, I saw, oh, that's why all my relatives tell story. That's why I tell stories like this. That's yeah. why I'm in the business of storytelling. Stories do three things. You relate to it. Oh my God, that's me. You remember it. I can't prove it, but we remember stories. The story of the country, the story of the company, the story of our family. Yes. And if it's a good story, you'll retell it. So I think storytelling, that's my take on it, but it starts with being vulnerable and getting real. And why are we all in this world of fake, uh, phony, processed? That's what social media says it wants when you ask all the time. And yet most social media is so fake. Oh, look at my perfect life. Look at my perfect wife. Look at my, per I'm not having fun. Look what I'm eating. You know, we're, it's this perfect version of ourselves here. I rarely see people stay up and say, oh man, I'm, hung over. I'm scared. I don't know what to do next today here. I'm going to post this on Facebook. No, I'm, I'm me on vacation, having a great time. Don't you wish you were me? It's uh, I, I don't know why we have to be phony all the time here. Because it's simple, right? It's easier. It's egocentric. Yeah. So Whereas the alternative takes a lot more work. Yeah. And, and it's scary to be vulnerable. Yes. Oh my goodness. To say you don't know I'm not sure. I wasn't uh, clear what to happen. So talk about what the work that you do at the SBDC. You've had this background, this different way of looking at it, which is very similar to the way I look at it. It isn't just it isn't just about tricking them to walk in the door. I guess you got to be clever. I was an entertainment PR person. A lot of what we did was tricking people, coming up with goofy stories to get you to pay attention to a movie or something here. But in the end, if it's going to work, you got to really connect with people. And to do that, you got to be honest, you got to be open, you got to be real. So how do you get people to be real? What do you tell them to do? Lovely question. Um, I will tell you that in the list of marketing firms or tactics or strategies that you mentioned at the start, mm -hmm. 
I'm old enough to have worked uh, with Chambers of Commerce. In fact, right. I, I was hired in high school uh, to be assistant to a designer. He was my boss. He was 24 years old. I was 16 years old. And <laughs> together, together we were creative. It was so long ago <laughs> that he got fired for for smoking weed in his car. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, I remember those days. <laughs> yeah. But my. I attended a lot of networking events as a young person, and, and I began to understand the significance of handshaking and connecting and seeing people in the eye. And, and I would hear stories of, because I worked for the chamber, people would come in and say, listen, my business is hurting, yeah. I need help, I'm going out of business. Very vulnerable, right? Right. And, and because of that vulnerability, I began to see the value and, wow, I now know his problem. What can I do? Right? Yeah. I, I was a professional. And somehow you public. felt for him. There's an emotional connection. When you get vulnerable, people either shun you and go, I don't want to hear this, or they or they embrace you. I'm going to help this person. I'm going to do more than I would normally do. Correct. Correct. And so um, you fast forward, social media sort of uh, embeds itself into our existence. It's now uh, really the epicenter of almost all marketing, right? Mm -hmm. the, the catch is the fun fundamentals remain the same, right? Can we, can we connect? Can we provide value? Mm -hmm. Can we entertain? I always tell people as I'm coaching three pillars of social media, right? Entertain, educate, and inform. Oh, I like that. And if you can combine those three, you've got entertain. Let's what are they again? Entertain, educate, and inform. And inform. How's, yeah. how's educate and inform different? Well, educating could be much more, uh, here's how you do, here's a DIY project, right? Start right. with these materials, you, whereas in farm, I'm telling you the news, for instance, one of young guy, he just started this couple, three months ago, and he, and what he, his, this is his angle. He says, here are the top news that you will not hear from the networks in mm. 60 minutes. Mm. And he'll tell you in 60 seconds, excuse right. me. And he'll tell you just something spill, something exploded, something. And, and sometimes it can be very positive. Right? So he's informing us. Mm -hmm. uh, there's another young lady that I really, really like. Uh, she claims to be unbiased. And she'll tell you, this is how this network reported the news today. Mm -hmm. This is how this other network reported. In the middle, here's what you need to know. Giving you information you can't find elsewhere here. Right? That's right. Not just how to do something, but... Uh taking right. it because we live in a world without um filters we used to have aggregators uh the ec the networks uh the newspapers they pulled these stories together and there were a couple of them to choose from but there weren't a lot and now there's an everybody's an expert i'm an expert my wife will come and say look at this somebody said this about eggs and i said who's this person well, right. this isn't the national a right. medical association. This is just Joe Blow blowing hard about what he thinks he knows and you're believing him, but. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Which is kind of interesting because what I've seen in the last six months really is uh, professionals using that very concept to debunk these ideas mm. and positioning themselves as the expert because of these. Because I, I told you the truth. Nobody else will tell you exactly. the truth. And right? she, and, and they will say, what one of the one of the channels that I listen to often is uh, tax strategies or tactics, tax advice. And these guys say, did you know you could write off your dog as a as a business <laughs> as an employee or <laughs> yeah. It, yeah, yeah. And it, or did you know that you could your child can be an employee? I've or heard it that. Matter yeah. if they're six months old. Yeah. And so this woman will let that play and she said, here's what you didn't hear. And she'll get into the, <laughs> yeah. and it's brilliant, right? Yeah, right. Because she is in that, in that example, positioning herself as the expert voice, right. which is very important in marketing, right? You want to provide value, enhance added value. That, and that's a great way to get you in the door. Once you get into that, in that door, can she remember your name? Can she remember your birthday? Right. Can she remember to call you and say, listen, I, you and I talked about this last time. Where are we? Uh, by the way, as a coach, I have the, the amazing opportunity to keep people accountable. Mm -hmm. right? Yes. And oh, that's the fundamental rule of a coach. Just don't show me there. Make sure I do it. 
And because of that accountability, people will often say, I forgot, I dropped the ball. <laughs> Knowing that you were going to call me uh, made me anxious, right? Yeah. And it's vulnerable. And so you got to take ownership of that and say, listen, my job is to support you in achieving this. But so there's this give and take, right? Yeah. And, and I love that exchange of information, vulnerability, expert positioning, and again, getting you in the door, like we do at the SBDC, we'll host events, work, uh, host a workshop, get you in the door. But once we have you in the door, can I remember that you're a human with yes. vulnerabilities Amen. and help you? Can I remember you're a human? Well, too much of marketing. We're moving into the world of AI. We did a feature on that a way ago, and that's certainly going to, it makes a lot of things easier. I can speed up my messaging. I can speed up my content creation. I can do, I can target things better. Uh, it'll write the a better catchier title than I can come up with based on a search of what people are searching for. Yeah. But is it real? I appreciate the time you spent with us. What an interesting connection. What an interesting conversation. And if people want to connect with you, how do they do it? Well, they must contact the SBDC. I'm happy to give you the 800. Yeah, please. Number. I need to pull it up because I don't know it by heart. It is 800-616-7232. This is our intake office. They'll gather your information, uh, get a snapshot of where your business is at. And then if marketing is what you need, then you can request to meet with me. Um, or at that point, the intake team will determine who is a better fit or where you're at in business and in the process of launching or in the process of growing, scaling, and they'll align you with the most ideal uh, consultant. And, and it isn't just a chance to meet. Don't just call and we're going to try and sell you something here. How about a connection? How about somebody who's going to assist you and stick with you for a while and, and not just give you a quick answer? That's the power of these things. You don't just I take a jump in and jump out. I mean, if people really need help, you're there as a support, as a as a person to lean on, to listen to, to share ideas with and see if you can't together find a solution. In fact, I used this analogy this morning already. Um, but one of the things that I do, the, the thought process is people come to me, whether they're referred by another consultant or they determine that they need more marketing. A lot of businesses love the topic of marketing right? because it sounds like it can solve a lot of problems. Exactly. But the analogy is this. You've come to me and you said, I have a vehicle. Please help it. Paint it yellow. I want to be a taxi, right? <laughs> and, uh, and so I can do that, certainly. And we can start getting you some, some, some passengers in the back seat. But what if the brakes don't work? Yeah. Right? Right. What if the engine's about to die? What if the seats are torn? So marketing would only expose some of those problems. Right. And maybe create a liability, right? Mm. And so in the process, before ever launching into a marketing solution, idea, or process, I always look at where are you? Let's take inventory. Let's do some diagnostics. Mm -hmm. Is your traffic primarily a mobile traffic or computer-based? And if it's mobile, is your mobile website working? Do you even have a website, right? And, if and is it mobile are... enabled? Is Because it show that's up right. differently on a small screen than a big screen, yeah. That's right, that's right. And if the answer is, yeah, we have it, but it's not working, uh, the diagnostics will tell you where you fall in this process and we get back to work. We first need to fix, you know, make sure the brakes work. Make, make sure the nice. brakes work. Make sure you're a good driver too, because you might be a lousy yeah. driver. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Well, I think this is a fascinating conversation, and I encourage everybody to make a connection out of this, to think about your own marketing with your customers. Are you just trying to trick them in the door and hope the rest of it takes care of itself? Or are you really at that point trying to connect with them and hold on to them and really listen to them and work with them? Um, that's what the SBDC does, and that's why I'm so impressed with people like our guest here today. Edgar Mahia, did I say it right? Am I getting yes, closer? Sir. All right. You're getting closer. I even closer. As, as we get to know each other, I feel closer here. That's the whole idea of creating a connection. Thank you so much for joining us here on Profit Talks. And give us again, spell your name if anybody 
has trouble uh, remembering it. It's Edgar. That's simple enough. How do we spell your last name? M-E-J-I-A. So simple. Why am I struggling over it here? All right. <laughs> and uh, you usually work way out of Montclair Center, but you're available to anybody here in the network or anybody here in Orange County, Inland Empire and stuff. I'm here. available across Southern California. The, as a matter of fact, I am also a consultant for the state of Texas. And the I'm state also of a, Texas. Wow. That's right. Specifically oh. for the child care industry. And uh, I am also a consultant for an organization out of Boston. Uh, and so I work in Hawaii, Colorado, and California. Oh, my goodness. So we got to come back and have you talk about all that because that's just, we can't just leave it there, but we've run out of time <laughs> today here. Today we're talking about whatever you want to call it, online marketing, digital marketing, social media marketing. He's calling it connection marketing. I think that's the best term yet. Thank you for joining us. As we conclude another episode of the Profit Talks podcast, we hope we've empowered your entrepreneurial spirit. Reach out to us to connect with our experts and let's take your business to the next level. Keep those dreams alive, keep pushing forward and stay tuned for more. And if you liked what you heard in today's podcast and you want your business to reach new heights, just contact us at profittalkspodcast.org or call us at 1-800-616-7232. That's 1-800-616-7232. So until next time, keep thriving.